Well, thank you, Mr. Customer. And now that we identified your business needs, I wanted to get into a program that we recently put in place, and that is our best-in-class occupational medicine program. And how this came about is about five years ago, we took a look at ourselves as a company and we realized that we weren't doing everything the way that we thought we should be doing or the way we wanted to do it. So we wanted to hold ourselves to higher standards, increase uh, you know, our level of care and become a best in class occupational medicine program. So we reached out in venues like this or settings like this, one-on-one um, -on -one with our employers as well as we got a group of employers in a room, sat them down and we asked them, what does good look like? What do you wanna see out of a occupational medicine program that you, know, you would consider best in class? And we came up with a great, great amount of uh, answers, great answers, but the only thing is that they were kind of inconsistent and all over the board, meaning what was good to an HR manager is something different than what looks good or what is good to a safety manager. So at that point, we reached out to uh, third-party experts, um, different doctors, uh, people from the AMA, uh, people from ACOM, which is the American College of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, and we asked them the exact same question. We asked them, what does good look like? What do you need to have to be considered best-in-class uh, you know, and have a best-in-class occupational medicine program. What they did was they put together a list of 10 must-haves, and those are these 10 things here listed in this column. So you can take our name off of this, and you can evaluate any other provider out there, and you will wanna make sure that you are getting these 10 things. Um, what we did do as Concentra is we try to simplify it a little bit, and we took those 10 must-haves and we boiled them down into four keys. Those are color coded here on this sheet. And those keys are employer engagement, patient engagement, clear communications, and quality medical outcomes. We felt if we could simplify it, um, you know, and you could identify these four keys, it would help drive those 10 must haves. Um, just here today in our meeting briefly, we uh, touched on two of those. And one being this first one here, which is an established injury program processes. What that means is you have a program or a process in place, so if someone gets hurt, John Smith gets hurt, you know where you need to send them, you know what type of paperwork you need to send them with, you know what type of care they're gonna get, and uh, then you also know what type of you know feedback you're gonna get, how you're gonna get it, what type of reporting, follow-up, prognosis reports, that whole nine that you're gonna get. Um, as well as, you know, that can go into PT, referrals, uh, diagnostics, so on and so forth. Um, you'd be surprised a lot of employers out there do not have this in place so when an injury occurs they're scrambling and then they end up usually at the uh, emergency room which you want to try to avoid at all costs or uh, you know an urgent care and ultimately may not receive the best care that they should get for a work-related injury. Another one is uh, occupational medicine expertise and philosophy. What this means is our company is very focused, our bread and butter is occupational medicine and treating the work-related injury. Um, all of our doctors are very well versed in occupational health care as well as they understand the uh, OSHA regulations and the OSHA guidelines. They understand the impact that recordables have on you as a company in your industry. They also understand the importance of getting your employee back to work in a very safe and timely manner. Um, you know, if you're dealing with an urgent care or an ER, they may only see one work-related injury a week or even a month. And so they really don't understand the dynamic of working with the patient as well as the employer. May not understand the uh, importance of a recordable injury or making that injury recordable. May not understand OSHA regulations. And so a lot of times they'll give them um, prescription meds, prescription meds tell them, you know, rest for three to five days and then follow up with your PCP. 
well, there's already three to five days where nothing's been done and you know, that, that case is getting extended and the patient's not getting any better, uh, you know, you just kind of start from scratch three to five days later. Um, so those are two things that you know we discussed during our meeting, but there are eight other uh, must-haves there in that list. So you can take a look at them at your convenience. How this chart works is, of course, the must-haves are listed and color-coded there. The column next to it is just a little bit more detail on the titles they use, you know, for the 10 must-haves. And this third column is, is probably the most important column, but it tells you why each one is important to you and you know why they're important and then the impact that they have on you and your role as well as the company and then the far right column just shows you um, what the results if you don't have all ten of these and it's you know workforce productivity goes down uh, case duration gets extended goes longer um, cost goes up the case you know the cost of the case goes up you start getting into indemnity costs and just a lot of uh, kind of common sense things but we hold ourselves to these standards um, like I said we put this program in place and we want to be considered best in class so if at any point you feel like you're not getting uh, one of these or two of these or in, you know whatever of, of these 10 must-haves please let me know let us know and we will definitely address it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but that is the, uh, the best-in-class occupational medicine program that we have in place. If you have any questions, you know, after you take a look through it, please let me know and you know, I'll get them addressed for you. All right, thank you very much.